Hello students, today I'm going to take you on a very strange journey explaining where in the world we get this word vignette. It's a strange one. The first thing I want to point out is this cool word that's up here, this word etymology. Etymology uh, literally means the study of word origins or word histories, where they come from. This part, ology, means study of, so you know, biology, the study of living things zoology, study of zoo animals, etymology, the study of word origins. There are words out there, some of them are really boring in their histories, you know, just something like, eh, we picked it up from Latin, but some of them are fascinating. Did you know, for example, that the word window used to be wind's eye, the eye of the wind, you know, you've got a little hole in a wall, the wind can come through, of course you could call it a wind's eye. But back that way back when it's an old, old, old world word, in old Anglo-Saxon they pronounced I as aug. So it used to be windsaug, windsaug, window, 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 window. Um, but it's pretty cool. We use the word window so often without realizing its etymology. It's fascinating word history, meaning wind eye. So here's a word that we use in literature that has an odd, odd, odd history, okay? The word vignette is French. Vigne itself means either vineyard or vine, literally the snaky thing that grapes grow on, okay? Vigne. And then French people like to put the word ette -E as an ending to mean cute little something. You know, like, oh, it's, it shows up in girls' names sometimes, Cosette, cute little Cosette. Um, it's, kind of, it's a feminine ending, cute little dainty thing. So vignette literally means little cute grapevine. Okay, now it's going to go all the way to mean poetic chapter in a book, all the way from grapevine. It's got a strange history, like I said. So what happened was um, when people started to illustrate books, they used to decorate them so gorgeously. It's pretty amazing how back in the old days, when books were so hard to make, they spent so much care and time making them gorgeous. And now when it's relatively easy to print books, you know, we're a lot simpler in style. Um, but they found that you could really jazz up a page very easily by putting a decorative grapevine around it. Uh, grapevines are pretty. They've got these really cool curly cues interesting looking leaves, the grapes themselves, you know, that, that's fancy, that's fun, and it can fit easily in the margins. And so they started to use the word vignette to mean any sort of illustration, maybe at the beginning or end or around a chapter, that featured a vine motif that looked like grapevines, okay? Before long, it transformed so that vignette became a word for any illustration in a book no longer connected to grapevines anymore, but still look how curly Q we've got here. You know, fancy schmancy little rosettes, little f corrupted file here, sorry about that. A very old fashioned feathery looking thing. Okay, but still you would look at that and nowadays you would even say that's a vignette. It's a little illustration that you would put in a book decorative for decorative purposes. Then because illustrations in books often aren't the complete picture. They often kind of fade out around the edges. Like look at this tree in the background. It just ends, right? And there's no sky behind them, it just ends. Um, the fourth kind of morphing of this word became a style of il illustration in which a picture just fades out around the edges. This one happens to come from Through the Looking Glass where Alice in Wonderland is dealing with Tweedledum and Tweedledee. So any illustration that fades out. Again, this is a definition we still use. We still use it to mean in, in a picture or in photography, something that's hyper-focused and then something that fades out. You know, you can actually go on any photo editing uh, software, even the simple ones like the Google offers or up to Photoshop, and it will have options to give you vignette style. You can take your photo and have it fade out. Uh, whether to black or to white. Um, it's kind of fun to play with those filters every once in a while. So again, we still use the word vignette to mean any illustration in a book that's fancy 
and an illustration that fades out, okay? Something that hyper-focuses and then fades out. And then we have to, oh, here's another one, um, focusing on the wheat fading out around the edges. Now we have to make the leap into this, a short, graceful literary essay or sketch from the idea of capturing a small picture in words and then it just goes away, it fades out around the edges, okay? Now, it's interesting how often that visual language and literary language kind of meld together. When you think about it, how often do we use words like the author illustrates a point, the author paints a picture of an unloved character, and we're using illustration and art words to describe words. The author depicts a certain setting, you know, literally draws it out. Um, so it's not that big of a leap, actually, to go from a visual image that fades out around the edges and is hyper-focused to this idea of a short, graceful literary essay or sketch from the idea of capturing a small picture, but now in words. This meeting was first recorded in 1880, and something like a good blog entry or a diary entry is, is a good example of vignette style. You know, think about a, a baker's blog or somebody who does dessert blogs. You know, on one day they might post something about making a lemon chiffon cake, give you all the instructions. But the next day they might talk about how they once brought a strawberry rhubarb pie to their grandpa and it made him so happy. The next day it might be about going on a cupcake contest and getting second place. The next entry might be about making candy canes. So they're all thematically related and yet they're very, very separate. They don't flow together chronologically or in a narrative form. And then, really, that's about the basic idea. You can think about vignette now as meaning any sort of small, endearing scene, a view, a picture, or a slice of life. Um, whether it's in picture, whether it's in words, or whether it's in theater. Okay, they do vignette pieces in theater as well, highlighting a character, a scene, one little event, you know, short little sweet, um, little plays, okay? Um, pretty amazing that we get all this way from originally a word that means grapevine. I think it's extraordinary. You know, a very strange etymology. Okay, that is the end of that slideshow.